In this episode of Still Building America, we introduce you to Amaret McDonough, who shares her passion for energy harvesting and welding in space concepts. While earning her associate's degree in welding technology, a basic research project for a NASA scholarship turned into something way bigger than she could have ever imagined. And now, with only three years of field welding experience with a NASCAR Cup Series race team, Amaret has started Black Moon Space Technology with the goal of landing an SBIR grant from NASA in order to expand her research and development. She is devoted to uncovering answers to some very big questions about welding in space. I started following Amaret on Instagram. If you go and look at her account, which is Black Moon Space Tech. Yeah, I was the grand welder, but when all this started, I decided to just switch it over to my business account since I already had a a following. I've had the account since... I want to say 2018 or 2019, I was in welding school Yeah. when I started it. I just thought it would be fun. Um, and I followed Hot Steel Welding. She was probably one of the first people I followed. And then Ray Ripple. And then it just, you know, escalated from there. And I, I think it's great. I, the community is awesome. Especially all the girls out there, like what they're doing. They're, they're kicking ass. Heck so yeah. cool to see that. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. There's so many amazing women in the trade. Of course, we always love highlighting the amazing women. I want you to share some of your welding journey with us, like how you started and how you got to where you are now and what you're doing. Um. Well, I guess I've always been involved. I've always worked on cars and I mean, rebuilt tractors and um, just had a fascination for engineering. Uh, When I was, I think I was actually 16 when I started going to college for the first time. And I got involved with the rocket team with a physics professor that I had. And that's probably what really influenced me to go for engineering was being project manager, manager on a rocket team that got a NASA USLI project for the only community college in the entire country. Um, I didn't actually get to do the NASA USLI project, but I did the the project that got the, um, you know, did it for the school. So it started a rocket fire and ended up going for seven or eight seasons. There's even a display case at Mitchell Community College in downtown historic Statesville with my rocket in it, (laughs) Uh, which is crazy because Uh, fast forward, I guess that's another long story, but I decided to go, it was kind of a whim. It was one of those things I had, I did go to UNC Charlotte for engineering and physics for two years. I tried to, um, and ironically, one of the only things I didn't get to do before I had to drop out was welding. I did machining. I did physics too. I mean, I did calculus four and differential equations, and for some reason, I had to drop out because of pretty much money and it was just not the right time. Uh, I never tried it and it always bothered me that I never got to try it. Um, and there was a couple, I got, had a couple opportunities once. The first one was MIG welding um, at a biodiesel company. I was checking out at in Colorado when I was living out there for a little while. Um, and then when I moved back to North Carolina where I, I live and I'm, I basically, I grew up here. I was friends with an Xfinity team and they let me try SIG welding at a race shop and it was over. (laughs) I took some money I had and checked out classes, I think within a few weeks of trying it TIG for the first time and knowing that Meg had just sparked something in my soul, no pun intended. Um, And I, you know, welding is definitely one of those things. I feel like you should get training if you're serious about it. So I thought, you know, what's the worst that will happen? I'm either going to hate it and never want to do it again, you know, check it off the list or I'm going to love it. And, you know, obviously I loved it. Um, So it was $500 to go to community college for three classes. And I thought that is a steal for the (laughs) amount I would have to spend getting my own stuff would be way more than that. Uh, That was all I took for the first semester, but they had a five class uh, course basically where you get your, your one year welding certificate and it had MIG one, TIG one, stick one, cutting and blueprint reading. And I did that. Um, that's just kind of, I just took the classes, but then I loved it. I absolutely just, I started with stick welding and I fell in love and it kind of, I don't know. I've always been one to just design something and want to make it. And I have so many ideas. Um, and I have a serious passion for renewable energy. And I had a prototype I really wanted to build. And I kept 
waiting on guys to, to weld it for me. And it just never happened. They would just, you know, not be serious about helping me with this one prototype I had. So I just went to go build it myself. And that's part of what started it. So now I'm able to build my own prototypes. So I stuck with it because I loved it. And then because of my first degree that I got when I was like 18 or 19 and the rocket team stuff, um, I realized that after the certificate, the one year, which I got, I, it was six more classes to get my welding technology degree. And I thought I would be really dumb not to keep going because I love it. Like, I just love getting up and just showing up every day and playing with fire, like, <laughs> yeah. constructively, of course. Um, so when I was in school, which was 2019, I graduated in 2020 with just a, an associate's in welding technology. Somehow in all this, I was nominated by my school to do the NASA Aerospace Scholarship, which I got. That's and awesome. I wrote a paper on energy harvesting and welding in space concepts, yes. um, which NASA eventually called me about just September of last year, which is kind of why I started the company. <laughs> I have so many questions about welding in space. I've, I've, been, <laughs> I've I thought about it for so long, but uh, yeah, I don't want to interrupt you now, but yeah, I'm, that's awesome. Yeah. We'll yeah. get back to that. Yeah. <laughs> really mean for any of that to happen so that was uh I wrote the paper in 2019 um sorry this is kind of a long story no it's perfect so, love it to get a degree from Mitchell in welding I had to do an internship it's like some kind of state requirement I guess and somehow I got in at Stewart Hospital I guess being in Mooresville it's hard to get away from race teams I literally have tried <laughs> <laughs> so I got hired at Stewart Haas Racing um and then the plague happened canceled everything during that I was also because of the NASA aerospace scholarship I was personally invited to a all paid for trip to a NASA robotics competition in Langley in Virginia uh, which that sounded awesome but then of course that didn't happen so to make up for that NASA hosted a virtual two-week event it was five days a week of immersed in NASA now I was working on top of this, so it made for quite the experience with NASA and rockets on the screen and Daytona cars rolling around in the back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, NASA thought it was hilarious too. Um, and then they obviously knew about my paper and they sent it to the welding department of the International Space Station and Marshall Space Flight Center. Um, and they accidentally tried to hire me, but I don't have a bachelor's degree. <laughs> So to work for NASA, you like have to have a bachelor's degree, which I have two associate's degree and I have junior to senior level classes in, you know, a bachelor's, but I didn't finish. So I'm, I'm not qualified. Um, and I only have really two to three years of actual welding experience in the field. And I did this on a whim. So it's crazy that I even got this far. Eventually, you know, the plate canceled everything and they did the virtual thing. And that was, that was cool and all. But a year later, because of all that, Marshall Space Flight Center said, if you ever come to Huntsville, let us know. And I thought, awesome, I'm going to try to go to Huntsville. Heck yeah. uh, so then it was September last year. I, I mean, no one ever calls me. I was building race cars and I got a phone call and just you didn't think anything of it. thought it was spam, honestly. I think it was two days later. I thought, let me check this voicemail. <laughs> it was <laughs> not Goddard Space Flight Center calling me to tell me that they had liked some of my ideas for welding in space. Um, and they invited me to OSAM on orbit service assembly and manufacturing this conference they were holding in Huntsville. So of course I contacted all of the welding department at Marshall Space Flight Center and they invited me to come to Redstone Arsenal. I got military clearance and got to visit them while I was there, got to watch them weld a rocket together and all the behind the scenes. Um, I even, I guess some of it, I can't even really talk about. Of course. Um, but a yeah, few um, <laughs> things happened that I would never figure in a million years. Uh, that's where all the rocket picture, pictures on my Instagram come from. Right on. Um, but yeah, and then, out of that, about three weeks later, Stuart Haas, the Gen 7 car, came and laid off a third to half of their workforce. So it was just people in droves walking out the door or being walked out, I should say. Right. And then they kind of tried to keep me and 
I chose the third option was kind of a severance. So I took that and I just started a company because I didn't really know what else to do with everything going on. If I didn't have the NASA stuff, I might have stayed at Stuart Haas Racing um, or found a different team or something. But I thought I was doing this on the side anyway. Let me take this more seriously. Um, yeah. It's kind of escalated from there. <laughs> right on. Yeah, um, yeah. amazing. I want to have you comment on going into the tank. Oh, the microgravity simulator? Yeah. That's, that's the neutral buoyancy lab at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center. Um, and I guess that's like day one for astronaut training. <laughs> I wanted to experience what it's an astronaut would be dealing with yeah. um, just out in space for everything, just as for myself in general, but also for this research that I kind of accidentally started doing. <laughs> right on. Right, um, right. Yeah, it was cool. So I actually, I want to look into dive school, but I have serious ear problems and oh. I can't go underwater with getting my ears wet. And the only reason I was even able to do this uh, is because, you know, that thing in the bathtub you did as a kid with a cup where you put the water, yeah, you put the air in it. Yes. This is basically take that cup thing, add 70 to 100 pounds of weight on your shoulders and an oxygen tank. So that's what made me be able to do this was it was a bubble of air. It was probably one of the craziest things I've ever done was walking and it was 30 feet below in the tank I was just walking on the ground like oh, crazy <laughs> it was definitely crazy and trying to move wow. they actually made you do technical skilled labor in the in the tank where you had to unscrew stuff and we had to decorate a pumpkin and <laughs> help with like basic action I I should probably post the pumpkin pictures I want to see uh, it. yeah I'm I sure like there's it. a lot of pumpkins <laughs> in space so <laughs> Are you able to share with us what some of your paper focused on um, that won you the scholarship? That's kind of what's, I wish I could. I just don't know if I can. Maybe in another interview when I'm farther down the road. Awesome. It's really hard not to talk about because it is so exciting and cool. <laughs> so on a very basic level, space welding fascinates me because clearly the issue with welding in our atmosphere is that, you know, the nitrogen and everything combines and you start getting brittleness and porosity and all that. Right. Well, is, is it, is there, I mean, the, the atmosphere on different plants is going to be different. So are we going to need to use shielding gas or are we going <laughs> to use the energy source and stick it together? Or can you not even speculate on that? Cause those that's are, that's what's going through my mind. Yeah, no, I know. And I, maybe we can do a separate interview okay, on that. That's fine. I have lawyers now. I have two. Or three I don't lawyers. have any lawyers, so I can just talk <laughs> about my ideas and like you could just be like um, yeah, that's Marco Polo. Because it sucks. I really do. That's the coolest part about it. But that's also like kind of becoming yeah. top secret information. A lot of thought going into everything. And regardless, there's not much being done about welding in space other than electron beam welding and laser beam welding. And I just feel like those only go so far. But the thing about it is nobody has done experiments in space. And I basically am setting up all kinds of welding experiments for space because that's really the next step. If we can't do that, how are we going to move forward? Right. If we solve some of these problems. And I mean, even when I went to OSAM, one of the biggest things I saw was nobody had welding in space technology. Um, and it was cool because a lot of the concepts that I have have just been, the more I look into them, the better they get or the stronger I feel like they'll be. But there's a big argument between additive manufacturing and robotic stuff versus should astronauts be welding um but as a welder i don't know how we're going to do it without having at least somebody that can weld in space that is a welder that knows how to do it in case the robots fail or just they need it i mean you just never know well sometimes you have larger pieces i like i you're, you're going to be limited to a certain extent by how big of a 3D printer you can have or other kinds right. of additive manufacturing. Whereas if you can do manual welding, it's kind of limitless as far as scope goes. Sometimes it is just faster and simpler to send a welder up to do it. And I mean, some of it, yes, I do need a green needs to be robotic and eventually maybe we can go advance the technology, but we're not there yet. Well, it's like if you're building one-off motorcycles or even uh, you know, a, a run of 50 of them, or you're not setting up a robot to do those joints. 
you know, once you right. get into where we're doing like construction on a mass scale and uh, well, that's what NASA's gearing up to do all that. And they don't right. have the wealth technology. And I've decided to kind of take it on since I'm the only one that really has come up with. Well, I mean, I'm not the only one. I can't say that. Um, I haven't seen anyone else doing what I'm doing specifically. Um, everyone else is focused on friction stir, laser beam, and electron beam. And mine's more of a fail safe, just exploring all the technology. Like you said, there's different atmospheres and different parameters. The ISS has done a lot of experiments that have kind of proven that it is kind of okay to do stuff like welding in space. There is additive manufacturing that's going really well up there. So, I mean, I think it's a strong start and we haven't done any experiments, I believe, since the sixties and seventies and it was wow. Russia did them. It wasn't even the U S <laughs> it also, a- I mean, welding is essential to rocketry and I don't know how we're going to advance without more welding technology. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a book. I, I wish I could remember the guy's name, but the book was, uh, the man who knew the way to the moon, I believe is what it, yeah. what it's called. And, uh, it was this one guy who, who, came up with the concept of how we ended up going to space but he had a fight for every part of it along the way because it was kind of a way bonkers idea but it's helping yeah. it, it, with the station docking and sending a separate craft to the surface and that kind of like that was all kind of his baby and he had to really fight for it but like you look at all these advances we made these things that we did it was all 50 years ago like it we were 60 i mean we and the, the, thing the, happened 50 or 60 years ago they've been planning it for years longer than that yeah those were just I mean, 60, 70 year old plans that came to fruition 50 or 60 years ago. We haven't done anything since. No. Uh, I just don't understand it. I was really surprised that we've only done, I think, two or three EVA missions with welding. That's just crazy to me because it's essential to rocketry and yeah. life as we know it. But yeah, that's what started all this. <laughs> it's so fascinating. I've been searching for quite some time to connect with somebody who's been doing any sort of research or study when it comes to welding in space. And I did find, I had mentioned to you in our earlier conversation about astronaut Amber Gell, who has been doing welding and space research, but I haven't been able to get a hold of her. I'm sure astronauts are not just sitting by their phones all day waiting for my call. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'd love to feel like she's somebody that would be interesting for you to connect with, but that is literally the only person aside from yourself that I found who has done any sort of research. It's really exciting. I'm, I'm pumped to share even just your Instagram and your website with all of our audience out there so they can start following you and oh, maybe even you. gain some interest. Yeah, yeah. Gain some interest. And I know that you were also, we're talking about um, bringing some people onto your team. Yeah. I have a lot going on. I didn't really mean for any of this to happen, to be honest. And at the OSAM conference, I met a bunch of satellite recycling companies that are trying to clean up space. And I've kind of partnered with them on solving some of the welding issues that they're having so they can help clean up space. Um, but also I thought we need to build structures too. And it's there's- crazy how much junk is up there. Yeah. Well, it's one so of the insane. things NASA wants to do is to utilize that for in-space manufacturing. So okay. that's what putting together these conferences and getting ah. everyone- to- so you kind of recycle the stuff that's up there yeah. and use it again. Yeah, that's kind of awesome. the goal. NASA's goal um, from everything I'm finding out and working as working with them more and more. Um, but they're also investing more in private sector companies. So it's actually kind of smarter to kind of do your own thing. And then yeah. they're gatekeepers I'm finding. Like Elon Musk still needs NASA to be able to launch his rockets, but he's done obviously very well doing it in the private sector. Yeah. Um, and they created a really good platform to take it to the next level. Um, but having been personally to Marshall Space Flight Center, they still have lead paints on the buildings. And I'll have to post more of those pictures because, I mean, it is straight post-apocalyptic. And it didn't help that it was a dreary, rainy day when I was there. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I got wow. to see where the Apollo rockets were made and um, even the rockets, the rocket garden ones. So the first set of rockets, those are the ones from Redstone Arsenal. They're so dirty and dilapidated. Uh, the one at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center, they take care of that one. It's really nice. Um, but yeah, it looked like a apocalypse going to Redstone Arsenal. And as, then, as someone who works at a 
DOD contractor and has traveled to a lot of the bases okay. around the country. It is not out of the ordinary. <laughs> <laughs> so they even had legitimate welding equipment from the 80s that still had 1983 like computers. Yeah. That still run. <laughs> I mean, those like pre, yeah, I just couldn't Time to kick it up a notch. <laughs> still running those welders. So that wow. was wild. But yeah, they're really working with people on it. And I kind of have Marshall Space Flight Center Welding Department's blessing. They're interested to see where the project goes. Um, NASA's been oddly supportive of everything. <laughs> so it's kind of coming together way more than I could have expected. I feel like the cart is before the horse right now. I get it. But also coming from Stewart House Racing and it didn't help. I mean, I had Haas manufacturing on my side, or at least for my environment. And I didn't realize just how nice Stuart Haas was till I went to NASA. It was crazy. <laughs> um, so out of that, actually, and I'm really glad that I'm not the only one in the NASCAR community that saw this. Basically, with all these layoffs, there's a lot of talent, but also cup team level equipment that's also kind of aerospace equipment. And I tried to go to Stuart Haas with this, like, you guys should do something in aerospace. Uh, Joe Gibbs does it. I think some of the race teams have picked up aerospace work on the side to kind of make up yeah. for all of this. Some teams don't, obviously, it's too much for them to handle. But aside from that, we have so much technology that's just going to sit there now collecting dust. So okay. Kevin Mall of Champion Tire started an incubator program here in the Lake Norman, Charlotte area, where NASCAR, home of NASCAR basically, to kind of utilize all the technology and talent that just got laid off um, and pump it into new business, especially aerospace and technology. Um, so that's really cool. And I've been kind of helping wow. them out. We've been helping each other out, get all this off the ground. They're really excited. Right on. Um, it seems like a really nice util utilization of, of the resources available. We deal with the same thing in in Detroit, and I know I have friends in LA, the same thing when the, whether it's uh, aerospace or, uh, yeah. or automotive or whatever industry it is, they're, they're notoriously cyclical. So uh, if you can, you know, branch out and do some of those other jobs of those, the machines and the people are capable of doing, then it makes a lot of sense. Right. I mean, why sit there when you can be making or work for yourself? When you can yeah. be searching welding in space. <laughs> <laughs> i really want to weld in space i do i want to go out, like i don't even care if i they're like one way you can't even come back okay i still want to try it <laughs> i already know that he's committed more to welding in space than me so um... it's and i'm like i'm in horrible physical shape so it's going to be have to be one of those deals where it's like uh the movie where they go up and they drill the asteroid and they, they just get all the old uh, oil rigger guys that are just like out of shape and out of jail and like, <laughs> like whatever, we're going to go save the world. It's going to have to be that kind of situation because I'm never going to pass as an astronaut, but I will make that sacrifice to be able to weld in space. Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, if it came down to it, if I had to weld in, in the lower earth orbit, I would, um, I don't know if I would go to the moon or Mars, maybe the moon, uh, I definitely wouldn't want to go to Mars because <laughs> I feel like well, it's the, like front line of construction and building things. So if it's going to happen, it's going to happen to us. And we're the only ones legitimately playing with temperatures hotter than the sun. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> At our fingertips. But that's another reason I'm kind of the, I, I wish I could talk more about the actual idea I came up with because it's so cool. And I definitely want to talk to you. About yeah, it, let us sure. know. Yeah. Definitely will. Um, but if you're on my team, maybe you have, you know, privileged information. Um, <laughs> I can't really talk about it, but I also don't want to ruin it um, before it gets off the ground. No, Absolutely. I, I get it. No, hold that tight. But yeah, I'm excited. Um, I want to make it safe for an astronaut welder or just, I don't know, explore what everyone else is not exploring with all the processes and potential. Yeah, um, not just that. I mean, look how many advances we've had that come out of just like R and D for space travel, whether there's actual space travel or not, whether it's you know, with Teflon or WD forty or or duct tape or look at the. I mean, I can only imagine the the material technology and and welding. Like we might find a whole another way to weld even on Earth that that's more efficient. I totally agree with that. I mean, space technology. People don't realize the extent of how much it trickles down into our economy. Yeah. Uh, 
uh, but they're literally ramping up to commercialized space, whether I'm doing welding in space or not. So right. definitely, I feel like the industries are ramping up for all of this and everyone's trying to work together on this. Um, so that's been really cool meeting the other people also working on their, their thing that's going to go up, but we all need to work together to make it happen. Rely, you have to be able to rely on everyone involved in space. I mean, from the people on the ground to the people in the air, to your technology and your equipment. But I think it's beautiful. Like I've always, I've always kind of said this, that I always felt that space travel would bring the world together because we're all focused on, you know, doing something bigger than any of us can imagine instead of like fighting wars and stuff. I'll bring but, us together for a little bit and then we'll start flight fighting over planets. And Exactly. And I'm sure it'll get to that point. <laughs> Everyone seems to want to work together to make space happen, or at least the people in the space industry right. are just all across the board from all walks of life. I mean, it's so cool to see everyone coming together, especially like the satellite recycling companies. They have great ideas yeah. and we're not going to be able to do it without each other, just like every other industry, I guess. Right. Right. Yeah. That's so amazing. It's, I mean, space is still the, the great frontier, right? Yeah. <laughs> it really is. There's, I wish I, I need to memorize that quote from Interstellar. Have you seen the movie Interstellar with Matthew McConaughey? No, I don't think so. Oh, it's such a good movie. There's a quote in the movie about how, um, you know, we, we haven't even come close to achieving our greatest moment. We're still pioneers. I, I love that idea of, you know, we think we're so far advanced, but we have such yeah. a long way to go. There's still so much more to discover. It's still exciting to be a researcher out there, you know, somebody in research and development and just about any sector, but especially when it comes to space, like little kids can still dream about being astronauts. We want to let them know, well, maybe you can dream about being a welder astronaut. Oh, that'd be so right? cool if I could make that happen. Yeah, uh, I would, I would, I hope you do. I'm rooting for you oh. and your future team who comes around you. I wish I could talk about it. It's so hard not to. Well, when you can come back <laughs> to us first. <laughs> about it right now until it's a thing um because i don't know if it's gonna work or not I, I think some of it'll work for sure um there's uh, there's a lot of challenges obviously to overcome right but i feel like i have a good head start on solving a lot of them and connecting the technology that i'm gonna need and then because of nasa guiding me to options they have i am working on the national science foundation sbir for space for nasa okay uh, Grant, I believe for $275,000. I've been calling it phase zero because they accepted my pitch. Um, and you have to have an invitation to submit a full proposal. So I'm kind of, I'm more scared that they're going to say yes, honestly, that they're, they're going to say no. Um, <laughs> I know that feeling. It's a weird one. Uh huh. It's all very daunting and scary, but I'm also really excited because somebody needs to be doing this. I mean, why not? Be definitely the right time to do it. So why not? Job. <laughs> Stuart Haas laid me off. So what else am I going to do? Dive in. So a shortage of welders. So I, I guess that's probably another reason it hasn't been done. We're all so busy doing everyone else's, all this work that no one's really had to put effort into it until now. And I see why we're so essential, I guess. Yeah, not just welders, but people who are intelligent about welding. There's, there's both. Things. We've got a lot of <laughs> weld engineers who don't uh, have the hands-on experience that maybe they should have uh, or yeah. practical experience. I'm kind of glad you said that because one of the reasons I dropped out of engineering is because I wasn't in the shop more. I work in a, like a DOD prototype shop. And nice. so many times we have engineers come down and they're like, well, it worked in the model or what right. do you mean you can't put this to the, and it's like kind of something that if you're just yeah. looking at a computer and you only know the theoretical, then I can see where it makes sense. But there, there are things that don't translate as well. That If you've never gotten your hands dirty or turned a wrench or worked on anything physical, then you kind of miss stuff. I had a few key moments in engineering school because um, like I, I've been working on cars. I may not know everything there is to know about everything, but I've always been that girl that would jump in and with some wrenches. The reason I went to engineering school is because I wanted to know how to just make things. I want to be able to design a car and make it start to finish. I'm really glad I dropped out of engineering and became a welder. Honestly, I guess moral of that story. I know it took kind of a long time to get back to it, but I love being in a shop. Welding I opened so many doors, like just to look, to see where you're at. I, I, I look at people ask like, well, what path should I take? And it's different for everybody. But yeah. the common denominator is once you get in, like 
it's kind of one of the jokes in the Instagram welding community is all the welders that started as welders. They're all doing something different now. That is what opened the door. That That's what, yeah. you know, you made the connections with people. You made the connections with just maybe how we think. Maybe we think a little bit differently, but. Welders definitely, we do think differently. Yeah, I for think. sure. Oh, but I love it. I think it's great. I wanted to ask you again. I saw that you teach sewing. Oh yeah, I do. At Fashion Institute. And I love what you had told me about how that skill translated to welding. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah. When I had to drop out of UNC Charlotte, it was about... 2010. I've always been the kind of person where if I'm interested in something, whatever it is, I want to go find it for myself, make it happen somehow, figure out if I like it or not. You know, um, right. jobs kind of like relationships and I don't want to be in a bad one or something I'm not happy going to every day. And that definitely takes experience. Like there's only going through it to get where you need to be. I've been sewing since I was five, but there was not a studio around growing up. And I went to UNC Charlotte. I came back and Main Street in Mooresville blew up. And all of a sudden there's a bunch of shops there. And one of them was a fashion designer. And she had just moved to Mooresville, North Carolina from Los Angeles. And she was a fashion designer, a costume designer in Hollywood. She worked on movie sets and had a gown shop in LA for about 30 years. So she has a degree from the Fashion Institute and she's done so much with herself. She decided to move to Mooresville and start a school. Been with her about 11 years. I mean, I've never really like left. It's just as needed kind of part-time work, but I love doing, and it really helps my skills, but it really comes down to just shapes, building a little pattern and building on piece by piece, adding up your shapes, measuring it out, adding a seam allowance, <laughs> running a line of stitches and, you know, just kind of putting it together. I and mean, then when I got to welding, all of those skills of making patterns on the fly totally transferred. The only difference is you're cutting metal and you're setting it on fire basically instead of using a sewing machine, but it's running <laughs> line. I mean, there is even a foot pedal in my machine, just like TIG. Right. So it's kind of fun. Um, it's always cool when you're proficient in one thing, you kind of can see that that, that thing that transcends those lines. And it's like, okay, my mind's actually thinking this and these, uh, these two different kind of fields that I'm working in. Actually, my boss jokes that I'm her fabric engineer. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a great title. And I'm like, I even tell the kids that I, that I teach, like, you know, you're basically a fabric engineer. And I try to tell them to get really good at math and stuff. And then I also tell all the girls that women make really good welders. <laughs> I'll have to take a picture of it. So, you know, those diamonds I welded, have you seen those on my page? I did see those. Yes. Uh, so to prove how transferable the skills are, I made one of those out of fabric. <laughs> so I have awesome. metal diamonds next to a fabric diamond and I made a paper diamond for the pattern. Just, yeah, I guess the way to start um, is the paper and then just going from there. So I use paper for pretty much fabric and metal. It's pretty similar, but yeah, design. I feel like the design process is really just get an idea and they can wrap your head around how you're going to make it happen and then fill in all the details. I've been hunting for the right fabric because I want to make my own pattern for welding attire for girls. It's from welding school. He took my, my boss has a YouTube channel and he literally watched her videos after his welding classes and makes his own bags makes his own clothes now all from her videos so I thought that was really cool like watching him learn how to sew <laughs> like that's awesome that a guy would just pick up sewing that easily after welding I'm helping that first turn innovations incubator that Kevin Ball is doing they have kind of a prototyping facility um so they've been I put my welder there and I've been doing stuff but it sucks. I don't have all the welding equipment I need. I'm trying to get a Miller Dynasty 800 so I can do more. Nice. I know I that's like a pipe dream, but I'm hoping to get more funding with the project or just in general. I mean, welding, everyone needs welding. So, but I'm working on getting those so that I can expand what I'm doing just with my Millermatic 255, which is, I mean, it's a good machine. It just, aluminum is kind of one of my favorites. And I loved, I did a lot of aluminum on the race team. Right I did a and steel, but um, I just, I don't know. I want to be doing more aluminum and it's holding me back, not being able to. Yeah. <laughs> Got to start somewhere. Well, it sounds like you're starting from a pretty good place. I, have, like, I even have a welder, so I'm very thankful. <laughs> right, there you go. <laughs> I am kind of looking for someone with a lot as much. I mean, I only have really four or five years of experience in the industry and I'm trying to just create the right team for everything. And I need somebody with a background in physics or space and welding. 
um, that has a lot of experience. Um, so I'm kind of looking around for the right person. Right. Um, if I get the NASA grant, it's going to be paid as long as it's the right person to work with. I'd be willing to figure that out and privately, I guess, if anyone's interested. I hope that eventually, if everything goes well with the research, that it will be a full-blown space welding company that does recycling and in-space manufacturing and building structures. And I think we're going to need a whole team <laughs> for that in the future and, you know, probably three to five years down the road. I'm just in my mind, I'm picturing a bunch of badass like space welding rigs, like just floating around out there doing their thing and <laughs> yeah, everyone going getting a drink after work at the space bar and uh, it does. yeah, it'd be awesome. The space bar that you built. Yeah. Exactly. Somebody's got to build the space bar and the space Maybe. hotel. Space bourbon. <laughs> but where is William Shatner going to stay next time? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. He's going to want to stay a while. The one movie I got to go on with my boss, I got to meet William Shatner like seven years ago. Oh, that's amazing. It you was know, sweet. Talk about <laughs> <laughs> oh, William Shatner, like, oh, there's William Shatner again. Like, oh, seven years later, that in space. Like, he's really going places. This has been amazing. I'm so glad that you were able to put some time aside and yeah, chat with you. us. And you'll have to keep us posted. Thank you guys so much for having me. 